England is full of some iconic place names, London, Oxford, Liverpool, yet if we look further afield than these places, we start to find some really odd names, odd because of what the names sound like, or strange because of how they are said compared to how they are spelt. My name is Patrick, and these are five English towns with really weird names. <laughs> And quick side note, I'm not going into the rude sounding names in this video, just the silly and odd ones. The rude ones will probably get this video demonetized, but maybe we could save them for a whole video onto themselves one day. First up, we have the tiny village of Froop, which is incredibly fun to say. Froop, 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 Froop. I, I could say it all day. Um, Froop is found in the county of Dorset in the south of England. It's seemingly one of those small, quaint, quintessential English villages you would read about in a Beatrix Potter book or something. This name actually relates to its smallness, deriving from the Middle English word of Thorpe. Thorpe is an old term for a small English village or hamlet, so this small village is just kind of called small village. Froop seems to have been around for quite some time, so we don't know when this name got applied to it. But seemingly over the many years this Thorpe has been around, the name was corrupted into this silly little name of Froop that we have today. And if you happen to be watching from Froop, please let me know. Because, I don't know, I wonder what my Froop contingency are like. like Rep Froop for God's sakes, Rep Froop, bleh, got that in the end. Next up we have Westwood Ho! And yeah, I have to say it like that because what makes this name so unique is that officially it features an exclamation mark at the end of it. In fact, it's the only place name in the UK to feature an exclamation mark at all. But Canada also has a place with an exclamation mark in its name. Somewhere called St. Louis du Haha. Maybe we can look at that old Canadian name another time. I'm, I'm love using these exclamation marks. I think more words just randomly end in an exclamation mark. Fantastic stuff. Anyway, this village is found in the southwest of England in the county of Devon. This town actually started life as just a hotel slash beach resort. This hotel was established in the 19th century and the people who constructed it named it after the 1855 novel Westwood Ho by Charles Kingley, which was set in this nearby area. The hotel was named the Westwood Ho Hotel. I love just having this exclamation mark. I mean, you just gotta shout it because if there's an exclamation mark, you just gotta shout it. But anyway, Eventually, an entire village sprung up around this resort, and that village too took on the name of Westwood Ho! I don't know what I'm looking up there, it just kind of makes sense. <laughs> so this village is named after a hotel, which was named after a book. And if you're watching from Westwood Ho, please leave a big hey ho down in the comments. What am I doing with my life, Amber? Before we continue, I want to say a huge thank you to my most recent patrons and super thanks. So a huge thank you to new patrons Prometheus Castle Rock and Dinner Soup, and super thanks leavers CPT Norbert and Five River Tide. Apologies about pronunciation there. Uh, patron is the best way to financially support Name Explain, and donating just one dollar a month gets you ad-free videos, a chance to say what names get explained, an exclusive monthly newsletter, and your name at the end of all of these videos. All of that can be found at patreon.com forward slash name explain, which will be linked down below. Conversely, if you want to just make a one-time donation, you can leave a super thanks directly in the comment section of any of my videos here on YouTube. They help out tremendously too. Thank you. Anyway, next up we have Great Snoring. This is another tiny village found in Norfolk in the east of England. Yeah, England has like an east. It's not talked about all that much because England's shaped that sort of lump off the side of like northeast of London. That's like the east of England. Norfolk, what's the whole thing called? East Anglia. Yeah, I should go there some more. I've been there once or twice. Great place, but tangent aside, I can only imagine that the people of this town get a pretty good night's sleep. Well, Half of them probably do anyway. The other half probably kept up out of the snoring. Now, obviously, this village isn't named after the sound its residents make when they sleep. The snoring part of this name seems to come from an old English person name of Sneer. Someone with this name probably set up this village way back when. There is an idea that this name of Sneer means swift, so it might have been a nickname for some speedy person. But Whatever the case, the working theory is that Sneer was corrupted into Snore and then into Snoring. 
Why it's called great snoring, however, we don't seem to be too sure. Great in place names tend to imply there's a smaller settlement with the same name. However, as far as I'm aware, there is nowhere called just snoring, or even little snore, which is a shame because little snores like from a puppy or something are just adorable. If you happen to be watching from great snoring, leave some like Z's down in the comments something. I said Z's, I should be saying Z, sorry, I just betrayed my fellow British people, but I personally think Z is a better name for this letter anyway. We talked about it in a previous video, but yeah, come at me and angry English people for saying Z, I'm not afraid of you. Continuing on, we have the village of Blubber Houses, found in Yorkshire in Northern England. Blubber is a really odd word. It can mean the fat of an animal like a whale, but it can also mean crying. There's a folk etymology about this one that insists the name comes from the blubbering of little children as they were sent off to work in the nearby mill. To be fair, if I was a kid and had to work in a mill, I'd, I'd, I'd be pretty sad too. Luckily, this etymology doesn't seem to be too true. I mean, the fact kids worked in mills was probably true, like child labour laws were horrendous in the past, but that's not where the name of this village comes from. The origin of this name is actually much nicer and prettier than the name leads on. It's believed to come from Old English yet again and mean the houses by the bubbling streams, which creates a very pretty picture in your mind of a cute little village with a little bubbling stream going down it. A more fitting name for this village would be something like Bubbling Houses, but for some reason this bubbling was changed into Blubber. I suppose that's better than being named after the fat of a whale, I guess. If you're watching from Blubber Houses, leave some like no, no, crying emojis down below or something. I, I have no idea. I've kind of, kind of lost this whole bit. I, just, I don't know if it's really working or not, but we've only got one more to cover anyway, so it's okay. And finally, we have Worcester. Now, this name isn't strange in the way it sounds like the previous names. What's odd about this one is how it's spelt versus how it's pronounced. Despite being said like Worcester, it is spelt W-O-R-C-E-S. T -E -R. Now, most English people like me will see that word and not even think twice about how it's pronounced, but to many non-British people, they are super confused by it. It's become like a meme at this point of Americans being confused about the word Worcester, where English people are just like, oh yeah, that's Worcester. Like I personally, I kind of butcher every pronunciation under the sun, but even I can pronounce Worcester. It's just in ingrained into you. The name is ancient, deriving from the Weagora tribe of people from long, long ago. As to why the name is spelt so differently to how it sounds, that seems to be a side effect from English's very muddled history. In the past, people weren't as bothered about how things were spelt, or just spelt them how they felt at the time. Of course, there was also heavy French influence on the language after 1066 and that whole debacle. This left many English words and place names with spellings that are nothing like how they're pronounced. Other places like this include Leicester and Gloucester. Both of these places have like spellings that don't seem any way similar to the way they're pronounced as well. But what I love most about all this is that American English has actually attempted to sort out many of English's weirder spellings. But British English is just like, nah, we're, we're just gonna keep it that way. And I I weirdly respect that in some way. There's something very British for better and worse about knowing something doesn't work and is wrong, but just keeping it out of tradition, I suppose. That can apply to many things here in the UK, but we don't need to go into that. But uh, anyway, if you are watching from Worcester, leave a comment saying hello down in the comments below, but spell it in the most illogical way possible. And that's five weird English town names explained. Let me know about any other weird English town names I might have missed out on. Also, please suggest some subject areas down below which we could cover in the next five names explained video. It could be about literally anything and the subject area can be as niche or broad as you like. I will then choose three of those subject areas and place them in a poll exclusively for my patrons to vote on. Then the winner from that poll will be the subject area covered in the next five names explained video. You can vote in that poll as well as enjoy many other great benefits by visiting patreon.com forward slash name explain, which will be linked down below, and by donating just one dollar a month. Thank you. Anyway, that's more than enough for myself. 
Don't forget to go follow me on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT, and don't forget to go join the Facebook page Friends of Name Explain, where you can chat with myself and many other name nerds. Okay, all, take care. I just stood up before hitting record because I need to get something from my desk, but I can't remember what it is. Yet, if we look further afield than the. I went bad. Potter book or something. This. Westwood Ho by Charles Kingley. Sorry, I've got other people in the house. I'm like, they must be so confused about me shouting at the moment the word ho. The original. Cheers. Bye.